Now, do you have any experience with Methodist Hospital in Houston? Yes, I actually um, did my residency program, which is our training after medical school in the medical center in Houston. And so I spent, um, it wasn't the main hospital I worked in, but I spent a few months with a mentor of mine who was a gastroenterologist doing some work in, in Methodist Hospital, yes. Okay. What is your view of the suit that the Methodist employees have pinned against their employer? Well, you know, it's interesting <clears throat> because I spent time there at Methodist. Um, I noticed that there was a an aura in Methodist that they considered themselves one of the best. And I, I would agree with that. They are probably one of the best in the medical center. Um, there was a hospital that I worked in frequently called St. Luke's that I also thought was very good. But I'm saying that because the confidence and the aura that the employees of an institution have is a large part of the success of that institution. And I think it's very interesting that the pro-vaccine ideology calls everybody else, um, you know, lead headed, they're not open minded. But in reality, if you have people that work in the healthcare field, and have been doing so for many years. And there are a certain percentage right now, there are estimates from 50 to 60% of the healthcare workers across the country are either against or very concerned about getting the vaccine. Why would that not be taken in consideration? So to me, it's a very interesting suit because it does a number of things. Number one, it shows that the system of vaccinations has no desire to meet people where they need. It's a force vaccination. Number two, I think it's um, very, I think, um, beneficial that there were people at this Methodist hospital that were strong enough to say that they were gonna stand up and sue this corporation because there are many healthcare workers around the country that right now are concentrating on Houston. They say, let me watch how this happens so we know what we're going to do. There are plenty of them like that around this country. So this could be the spark of a healthcare revolution to, the, to a degree. And, and then the third thing that I think this is really indicative of is that we have a system that is falling apart. We have a system that is failing, has been for a long time, but this whole pandemic has really shined the light on the inadequacies of a medical system but yet out of the same inadequate system, there is this idea of forcing a medical idea on the entire population of this country. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be an interesting um, next couple of days and of course, next few weeks and months as these um, conclusions start to come out of this suit. Right, now the employees uh, who have filed the lawsuit are citing the Nuremberg Code. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that code and why do you think uh, they are citing it. Yeah, so the Nuremberg Code is a code of ethics that the medical community is supposed to abide by when it comes to treating patients, when it comes to experimentation, when it comes to any aspect where a person that doesn't have the same knowledge as this healthcare professional needs to be educated so that the decision that they make to be a part of this medical treatment or this experiment that they're making an educated decision and not one based on the money or whatever benefit they get from doing this experiment. Now, this Nuremberg Code came out of the concentration camps and the whole situation that happened with the Jews in Germany. And the interesting thing about this whole Nuremberg Code is that it has, a, it has never been protecting black, brown, and indigenous people, nor the poor. And so to me, the fact that Methodist Hospital, with my experience, is mostly white. It is an affluent hospital in Houston. There are a lot of presidents and other um, so-called big name people that were treated and taken care of in this hospital. So it's considered a prestigious hospital. But for these people to stand up again, as I said earlier, I think it's very interesting that they're standing against something that they fear or have a concern with. Right. And based on the Nuremberg, Nuremberg Code, they are 100% right in standing against it. The concern that I have is that, again, 
the majority of the people out those 117 people i don't know what the demographics of them are but i would probably lean to the fact that the majority of them are white right. and so the nuremberg code stands for them but when it comes to the experimentation and the medical mistreatments the mal um practice and the deaths and the the debauchery that black people poor people brown people native people have suffered in this country it has never applied to us so this is going to be very interesting on how this suit protects them as employees of Methodists, but also how that is going to roll out into other segments of the society. Now, what would you say or what it, what are at least one of your thoughts uh, about how this will affect other healthcare institutions? Well, based on what I'm hearing from um, colleagues of mine around the country, um, like I said before, there's, um, I mean, everybody's estimating 50 to 60 percent from the statistics that I'm reading. But the people that are working in some of these hospitals are saying that it's more like 70 or 80 percent. So for conversation's sake, let's just keep it at 60. If you have 60 percent of employees at facilities and institutions around this country that are saying, I'm weary, I'm afraid, I do not want to take this. And in order to keep the keep from developing consequences, they say, you know, we're not going to take the shot. And if you decide to fire us or decide to demote us, whatever, we're gonna sue like they did in, in Houston. Now you have a healthcare revolution, like I mentioned before. But then the other side of that, that I am concerned about the general population is, if Methodist does not, I mean, it's the, the employees of Methodist do not win, if this winds up being a negative for them, if a lot of them wind up losing their jobs, or all of them wind up use, losing their jobs. What happens if 60% of the healthcare workers in this country decide to pick it, decide to go on a strike, or decide just to leave the healthcare field period and do something else? That's going to be a pretty significant hit on that system that is already lacking and has already proved that they can't handle this pandemic. That would be a pretty serious threat, not only to the healthcare that general people seek, but to a large degree, that's one of the most successful industries in the United States at this time, the healthcare system. And so if healthcare employees decide to walk away in, a, in the amounts of 60%, 50%, or 40%, it's gonna be a serious problem in this country. Now, with that being said, that's probably one of, at least one of the short-term short -term outcomes of a case like this. What would you say, or what ideas do you have about a long-term outcome of a case like this, whether they win or lose. Yes. So I, I would look at that as a dichotomous reality. The beneficial side is that, that healthcare workers come to a conclusion that the system was broken anyway. And so we needed to produce something better and something more serving of the people. Because here it is that we have an industry that is supposed to serve the people but the majority of people that I talk to are believing that there is no serving of them. They are being used, they are being taken advantage of, they are being kind of used as a, a money bag. Mm -hmm. So if that is the concern of the people that are going to get care from a healthcare system, then the system has made the healthcare professional the one that's being served and not the person who is sick. And so, if this system winds up having 60%, uh, again, 50 or 40% leave, then it's going to fail. That system will not be able to keep up with the number of people that are still seeking help. Because here's what we really have to consider. The numbers of COVID have gone down. The severity of disease in a large number of people have gone down. And so there's kind of a relaxing, but if, vaccines are going to cause this number to go back up, which is a possibility, right. then what is this healthcare system going to do when people are pulling away and pulling out of it because they're being forced to take a vaccine that they're not willing to take? So we're looking at a pretty severe and a horrendous failure. But the good thing is that when something fails, something new is going to come up out of that. That's right. Now, during that clip, we saw uh, or we heard mention that four of the higher ranking, um, I guess I would say plaintiffs in this lawsuit 
have already been fired. What do you think that means to the the group, uh, the 117 of the lower, I guess, not so much class, but lower position uh, healthcare workers? Um, what do you think that means in regard to the fear that they might have about losing their job? Yeah, so I, I think that speaks to two things. The first thing that it speaks to is that there is a very serious concern in hospitals, in urgent care centers, in medical facilities around the country, because there are a lot of healthcare practitioners that are saying, I'm seeing more people that are having vaccine problems than I'm seeing with people with the actual virus. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing people that are suffering more from vaccine adverse events that I saw some, I'm not saying all, but some people suffer with the, with the actual infection. And so if there are four high position people that have already been fired, that to me sends a signal to those that are so-called lesser workers, right? That's all um, um, false anyway, but I mean, mm -hmm. from the perspective of these people in these superior positions being fired, that is a intimidation tactic to some degree. I don't know the specifics of it, but that's what I would look at it as, as these nurses and MAs and the doctors and the other people, the um, x-ray technicians and the phlebotomists, the whole system of people who are saying, you know, I'm kind of concerned about this vaccine, but they fired a vice president, they fired the CEO right. or whatever the, the name is, then that person has to feel very vulnerable at losing their job. So it's an intimidation factor. But I think the other aspect that it shows is that although this government is trying to push this vaccine as a safe reality, why are there so many healthcare, healthcare practitioners that are not agreeing with that statement? If you have 40, 50, 60% of people across the country saying, look, I'm in the hospital, I'm working, I know what I'm seeing, and I don't wanna go down that road, then that's a glaring disagreement with CDC and the FDA and this government in general and how they are saying that this vaccine is safe and effective because people that work in a healthcare field that are giving this vaccine and then seeing the people in the hospital, they would be the first ones to see the evidence of that. Right. Now I'm gonna pause you right there, Dr. Keeley. I wanna bring you right back after we pause for announcements from our sponsors. When we return, we'll have more with Dr. Akili on this. We'll be right back. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Go to nnvnews.com slash donate. Worldwide, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download the Final Call Radio app and take us everywhere. On your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also log on to FinalCall.com and click the Listen Live button. Or FinalCallRadio.com. Final Call, Final Call Radio. The official voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Follow us on social media at NMV News, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel at National Network View. I am Anissa Muhammad with NNVNews.com.